afterwards asking for questions and helping to moderate this. Let me introduce the speakers first. First at the end of the table is Richard Allen, who is an associate director of the UC Berkeley Seismological Laboratory and an associate professor of Earth and Planetary Sciences. Next is John Vidali, who is director of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network and professor of Earth and Space Sciences at the University of Washington, Seattle. Next is Thomas Heaton, who is director of the Earthquake Engineering Research Laboratory and a professor of geophysics and of civil engineering at Caltech. Doug Given, who is an earthquake early warning coordinator at the USGS in Pasadena. And then John McPartland, who is vice president of the board of directors of the BART district and also a member of the State Seismic Safety Commission. The way this is going to work, I'm going to ask Richard Allen to give a brief overview of earthquake early warning and talk about what the discussions were yesterday and today with seismologists and today with representatives of utilities and of various industries and legislative representatives. And then I'll ask for any comments that people want to add after that. And then we can open the floor to questions, which I think will be the most effective way of getting the information you need. So first, any speaker, please use this double mic so that we can get both webcast sound and sound of the TV cameras in the room. And we'll start with Richard Allen. Thank you, Bob. So I'm just going to give a quick overview. As Bob mentioned, we've just sort of ended a two-day summit here at UC Berkeley to talk about earthquake early warning. And so I'm going to give you a quick sense of what was discussed and sort of the conclusions that we came to in this summit. So the first thing is to describe what earthquake early warning is. This is an animation that shows a magnitude 8 earthquake in real time in Northern California. So when I came to this slide, the earthquake started at the top of the northern end of the fault here. The earthquake is currently working its way down the San Andreas Fault, and it's going to work its way all the way down to south of San Francisco. The circles that you see here represent the seismic waves coming from this event, the P waves and the S waves. The yellow is the P waves. They're the first arriving energy. There's very little shaking associated with them, but it contains information about the earthquake. So right now, we would feel a bit of a jolt here in the Bay Area as the first P wave arrives. However, we wouldn't really know what was going on. We would feel a jolt. We wouldn't know whether this was a big earthquake, the beginnings of a big earthquake, or in fact was a smaller local earthquake. The real damage, the real shaking, doesn't begin until the S wave arrives for this particular earthquake. The red circles represent the S waves, and it's only right about now that the S waves would arrive, as you can see some considerable time after the beginning of the earthquake. But still, the strongest shaking wouldn't yet be started here in the Bay Area. It's not until the rupture itself, this is the rupture front, it's not until this works its way all the way down past San Francisco that the strongest shaking and most of the damage would occur here in the Bay Area. So this is just to illustrate the amount of time that there can be between the beginnings of an earthquake and when most of the damage is done in an earthquake. And so that's the concept behind earthquake early warning. It's about getting a few seconds to a few tens of seconds uh, in the case of Northern California and Southern California, the maximum warning time is about a minute. Um, in the case of the Pacific Northwest, the maximum warning time is a few minutes. And so what we want to do is use our geophysical networks to detect these earthquakes and get a warning out as quickly as possible. Now, there's been a community here in the U.S. that has been working on this um, for a number of years. We've been testing uh, the system since 2006 with some success. But really things changed just a couple of weeks ago uh, when the earthquake uh, in Japan occurred because Japan has also been developing a warning system and deploying a warning system and in fact in Japan they successfully issued a warning to people in the region of strong shaking in that earthquake. So I'm going to show you um, this YouTube video. Uh, could somebody click on the actual video for me to start it? Thank you. This shows um, the warning system uh, uh, in Japan for this recent earthquake. Oh, can you go back? That's it, thank you. And so this is a warning that popped up on somebody's computer. Um, you can see the countdown until the shaking is going to start. Um, popped up on somebody's computer, obviously this particular person decided to start filming um, uh, what was going to happen. And you're going to see 
what eventually happens, this is in Tokyo um, a number of seconds later. I'm going to put the mic next to the, the computer. As you can see, there's a significant amount of time between when the warning first appeared and when the strong shaking starts. We're just getting into the interval when the, the strongest shaking occurs. This is by no means the strongest shaking. The shaking in the Sendai region, uh, much closer to the earthquake, was much stronger um, than this. And they also received a warning, although they didn't have the same amount of warning, they would have had a few, sort of five to ten seconds um, worth of warning. Okay. Can you go to the, oh, I do the next slide? So what we've been doing these last two days, uh, yesterday, the first day of the, the meeting was um, uh, uh, basically there was a scientist, uh, a university and government scientists who've been working on real-time geophysical systems on the West Coast have uh, come together in order to sort of talk about the current status of earthquake early warning and talk about what happened in Japan um, and the lessons that we've learned. Um, this, um, this is a, a list of the institutions that were represented um, at, uh, at this, uh, this meeting. At the end of the day yesterday, we uh, drafted sort of a resolution of where we think uh, what we think the current status is, and I'm not going to read all of these, uh, um, these points to you, but I'll summarize them. First is that warning, uh, uh, warnings can be provided before earthquake shaking is felt. Now, that's now a proven technology. They just did it in Japan um, in this once-in-a-thousand-year event. Uh, warnings are, are a complement to having good buildings um, and also preparedness plans. They are not a solution, obviously, on their own. Um, in the recent uh, Japan earthquake, a warning was successfully um, was <laughs> in the recent uh, Japan earthquake, uh, a warning was successfully issued, um, as I just showed you. Of course, the system was not perfect, and there are lessons to be learned about how the system performed, and that was uh, one of the main topics of discussion uh, yesterday. Uh, testing of a warning system has been uh, uh, underway in the U.S. for a number of years. Um, by some of the people that are sat here at the table. And what we think is very clear is that now is the time for broader um, engagement of the potential user community. And in fact, that is exactly what today was about. And then finally, sustained and enhanced funded um, is needed in order to make these warnings a reality. In fact, the early warning project in California is currently threatened by the current situation with the federal budget and could in fact come to a complete standstill um, at the end of July. Um, so there's a real question as to whether earthquake early warning development will be able to continue in the U.S. We obviously feel that it should, and it's been a demonstrated technology um, in Japan, and so we want to try and move forward in order to uh, be better ready for earthquakes. That was yesterday. Today, um, as Bob mentioned, uh, we also had, in addition to the group of seismologists, we also had representatives from industry, um, from government, um, from legislators. And the idea there was to really talk about how we move forward and start planning individual steps. I've listed some of the people who participated. This is not a complete list. Um, but the conversation today was really a very positive one. I think that we were, we the seismologists, were um, uh, frankly uh, quite enthusiastic and, um, about the positive response from industry to get engaged uh, in earthquake early warning development. Um, and we started to talk about very specific steps that we can take um, in order to work with industry to start prototyping this early warning system 